Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Ranking Member Raskin, members of the committee. I'm very pleased to uh, be here today to talk about our latest high-risk update. Uh, the story of this update is progress, uh, but many pressing, serious, consequential problems still need to be addressed. On the progress front, and I would commend the Congress for a number of things that they did to contribute to this progress. First was to uh, provide funding uh, to the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation, uh, which is coming off the list. Congress also provided funding for surface transportation, uh, dealt with some fiscal relief to the Postal Service uh, over this past year, passed a number of uh, provisions to build better climate resilience up front, and this dealt with many of the issues and it contributed greatly to the progress, as well as efforts by the executive branch. Now, there's progress in 16 areas, two of which we're gonna take off the list. One is the Pension Benefit Guarantee Corporation. When we were here last time, the multi-employer uh, program was due to be insolvent in 2026. And due to the action that the Congress has taken now and some improvements that have ha helped uh, in the single employer program, the PBGC now rates the risk of insolvency very low for the next 15 years. So we're gonna take that off the list. Now, just because it's off the list doesn't mean it's out of sight. We're gonna to continue to monitor it because it doesn't solve the long-term problems in that program. We're also taking the 2020 census off the list because of improvements made. Uh, this was the first census with an internet response. They were able to contain the cost growth in annual censuses from the pattern that had emerged earlier. They did, de delivered it during a pandemic. Uh, there's still a lot of issues in terms of the quality of the count that need to be worked on going forward. Again, we'll keep an eye on this area as planning for the 2030 census ramps up going forward. Now, the, uh, there are a number of areas still on the list that I think are very significant that I want to point out to you. Number one is cybersecurity. And I first added that to the high-risk list across government in 1997. I still don't think the federal government's operating at a pace commensurate with the evolving grave threat in the cybersecurity area, not only to protect its own assets, but critical infrastructure protection throughout the United States. The administration has just put out a, 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 a national strategy that we've been calling for. Uh, but it does not yet have a detailed implementation plan with milestones, resources, clear roles, and responsibilities. So we're going to need to be continued to focus on this area. We have 850 open recommendations yet in the cybersecurity area that we've made. And uh, so that area is very important, I believe, for Congress to continue to focus on. Uh, the second is drug misuse. We added this area a while back. You know, very concerned in the last 12-month period that uh, their, the CDC has been measuring. There have been over 107,000 overdose deaths. This is the most in the history of the United States. It's been over 100,000 now for the past two or three years. The trend is not good. Uh, we've called uh, for a national strategy with coordination not only among federal agencies, but between federal and state and local governments, the healthcare sector, the law enforcement sector. Just this month earlier, the Office of National Drug Control Policy uh, put out an, uh, an emerging threat alert because of the combination of fentanyl with xylazine, which is a horse tranquilizer, uh, has been coming uh, very problematic in, in this area and leading to additional complications. So they have to put out a report now within 90 days on how they're gonna do with this ne next evolving um, uh, issue uh, in this area. Lastly, I'll point out the area of uh, oversight of medical products and safety. You know, most of our products now come from foreign sources. Uh, we've encouraged FDA to uh, have more oversight uh, over that area. And I, I think uh, we still ha are at risk of drug shortages and the medical supply chain issue needs to be dealt with much more effectively than it's been dealt with before. And we have some suggestions on how that could be done. And so I'm happy to talk about any of these high risk areas in uh, the question and answer section. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today uh, to discuss these very important issues 
uh, with all of you and hopefully uh, help set the oversight table going forward.